Hello, my name is Taylor. I'm a financial coach and I want to show you guys the common mistakes that I'm seeing people making inside their Monarch Money account. I offer consultations for people to schedule time to ask questions about Monarch, ask questions about their setup, and I give them best practices when, when applicable. And so I'm seeing a lot of the same uh, issues, questions, mistakes, and I want to share those with you so that you can avoid them as well. So let's dive into it. So first off, the big mistake that I'm seeing is not spending a lot of time organizing your categories, figuring out categories, especially if you trans uh, imported from Mint. You probably have so many categories. Mint had way too many categories. So you need to spend some time organizing this, deleting categories mercilessly. If you do not need it, if it does not give you value, if you do not have care how much you spend in that area, See if you can consolidate it, add it to one lump sum category instead of having way too many granular categories. Uh, make sure you move your categories around, make sure you change the groups, make sure you organize this. I have a whole video on how to get this set up and I'd really recommend spending a lot of time in here to get you started. Now, this leads into the biggest question that I get all the time is dealing with transfers. Transfers throws us all off. There's uh, a lot of mistakes around transfers. So first I wanna explain what a transfer is. Uh, and to be able to explain that, we're going to start in categories here. And you'll notice we there's three sections inside your categories uh, settings. You have income, it's money coming in from a third party person. Expenses, money going out to someone else. And then all the way at the bottom, you have this area called transfers. Transfers uh, are supposed to be here. All these categories are supposed to be here. It is not a mistake. Don't try to move these out. They won't let you, but it's like you try to create these categories up here. Don't, don't do that. They're supposed to be here. And the reason is because the transfer is referring to money being transferred within your sphere of control. So money moving between your checking and savings or your checking and your investment accounts, money that is just moving between things that you own. It is not referring to transfers to someone else. That's not a transfer. That's an expense. Money transferring to a person. That's, that's an expense. That's going to third party person. Uh, and so uh, transfers really are just money between your accounts. Now, the th problem is, is that Monarch does recognize uh, quite well what are considered transfers and what isn't, but it makes a lot of mistakes too. So what we have to do is make sure your transfers are being categorized correctly, and I'm going to show you why. Um, and this is also something that I do for my clients uh, as we do at their monthly check-in. So I also do full-on financial coaching where I am helping them uh, create their budget, maintain their budget, go through an entire overhaul of their financial life so that they can manage their cash flow. And so I meet with my clients monthly and the transfers get us every single time with every single client. I don't think there's ever been a meeting where I'm like, hey, all your transfers are labeled correctly. It gets all, it's all. So if you are watching this, I want you to go into your transactions. And then I want you to filter, go to the filter section, um, click on the filter by category. And I want you to scroll all the way to the bottom to transfers, click on transfer. We're going to filter for all the transfers. Now in your case, there's going to be a ton of them. This is a demo account, so there's not very many. Um, but what we have to do is make sure is that all of these are actually transfers because transfers do not show up in your budget or your cash flow. They basically don't exist. Uh, they are just transactions that we do not need to recognize as either income or expenses. So you can see here, I have some Zelle, Zelle payments and they are being labeled as a transfer. That is incorrect, right? If I just spent, sent someone $1,000 on Zelle, that is an expense. That is not, I did not Zelle myself. Uh, so that is going to someone else so we cannot leave this as a transfer. I'm gonna show you why. If you go to your cash flow report, I'm gonna look at May. And I see this section here, there's income expenses and savings. This savings number is purely being calculated by income minus expenses. That's how they're getting this number right here. Um, and my Zelle payment of $1,000 is not either income or an expense because it's being labeled as a transfer. So it's showing me that I have a great savings rate. I've saved some money so far this month. I'm good. Well, you can see how detrimental that could be if you miss something. So again, we're going to go back to filtering by transfers. Uh, and then I'm going to go through all my transfers and make sure that these are actually being labeled as an expense. So if I label this as an expense, let's say it was for some home improvement projects, look what happens. 
I'm no longer saving the 1,048, uh, 1,498. I'm only saving 498. Uh, my savings rate went down, and that is a good thing because now we're accurately portraying our cash flow. So you can get a really um, bad a report if we do not make sure we're monitoring this. So Zelle, uh, Venmo's, um, what else is there? Uh, checks, those are all things that can slip through, be labeled as a transfer, and then go into the pit of despair. Um, so we need to make sure we actually categorize this. So this is a reimbursement from a friend. So let's say we went to a restaurant, they paid me back, so I'm gonna label this as the same uh, transaction as the original charge to cancel each other out because that's a reimbursement for me. Um, and then the rest of these though are looking good. These are all transfers. So another one is uh, transfers to like, let's say an investment account. Maybe you have a Roth or an IRA. These do need to be labeled as transfers and stay within that transfer section because if you created a category for um, transfers to Roth, let's say, or like Roth IRA contributions, let's say you created that category, it's underneath financial um, and it's living right here and I'm just gonna pretend this one is that, okay? This pretend this says transfers to Roth. If I did that, well, you'll look at my cash flow report and say, whoa, we really didn't save anything this month. Um, and that's showing up uh, as an expense, and that would not be correct. So transfers to your investment accounts, to money, to accounts that you have. These are that is what the transfer category is for. So because the transfers do not show up in your budget or your cash flow, there's no reason to hide these. I see that happen a lot, people hiding these, that it's doing, transfers are basically doing the same thing as hiding a transaction. And then on the topic of hiding transactions, um, I also tell people to be very cautious of what they are using, of what they are choosing to hide in a budget. A lot of people try to hide one-off expenses or larger expenses in the budget because it just makes their cash flow look ugly. And I really encourage you not to do that. So for example, you might see in April like, oh gross, like I way overspent. And, but it maybe wasn't because of spending, maybe it was because of a big tax bill, right? So a lot of people will try to hide this, but that would be very incorrect to do because otherwise it's going to tell you that you've uh, saved that money or it just was never an expense. So if if I went in here um, and labeled this as hidden, go ahead and do that. We're gonna look at the cash flow now and it's saying I'm good. Look, I uh, actually saved money that month. I have a 26% saving rate. Well, when I look at the end of the year, it's gonna tell me how much money I saved and I'm gonna be wondering where the heck that money is because I know it's not in my bank account. Well, that's because you sent it, spent it on taxes or any of those other one larger purchases. So it'll be very confusing to you and it'll be very disappointing as well. So just be very cautious. There's very few situations where hiding a transaction is appropriate. Another common mistake I'm seeing is with marking uh, reimbursements for like uh, return purchases or money from friends as income. You don't wanna do that. Some people have like a yeah reimbursement category or a return purchases category. I encourage you not to do that. Um, I encourage you to treat those expenses, um, treat those, uh, it's, uh, those reimbursements as an expense in a way. Um, so if you spent $100 at Target, you returned $50 of it, that return of $50 should be labeled as the same category as the original Target expense, so shopping. Um, the reason for this is when you look at your cash flow at the end of the year and you're seeing how much money did I make this year, you do not want your Target returns or your the $20 your friend gave you for lunch that you paid for as part of your income. That'll be very confusing. It won't be accurate there. Uh, so stay away from from that one. Another common question I'm getting is with goals. Uh, a lot of people are asking me how to use the credit card goal. That's a whole can of worms. I will tell you that you never need to create a goal if you are paying off your credit card in full. So if you're carrying a balance, you'll need this goal. And that's when we need to talk about the goal for credit cards. And I do have a couple videos on this. But if you're paying off your credit card in full, you never, ever, ever need to create a goal for your credit cards. Um, if you're paying it off every statement, don't worry about that. So those, those are some of the most common mistakes, questions, uh, things that are tripping people up that I get most often, but there's also a lot more and it depends on just your unique situation. So if you need some help with your Monarch, feel free to reach out. Uh, that is a service I offer, just scheduling them some time to do basically a Q&A about your Monarch. We can look at your screen, you can show me what's going on, and I can help you out as best as I can. 
I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you want to outsource all of this, if you want me to set up your monarch, if you want me to set up your budget and talk through your spending needs, the financial goals that you have, the spending goals, talk through the debt payoff plan needs that get a real overhaul of your financial life and implement this all in monarch for you. Uh, I also offer that service. That is my financial regeneration plan. And uh, you can also review that on my website with the link in the videos below. So Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, leaving your comments, asking questions. Uh, it allows me to help make better videos for you. So let me know what you're wanting to see, what was confusing, what's helpful. And uh, so, so I can help you as best I can. So thank you so much.